Hello everyone. Welcome to week 5 companion notebook. In this week we will go through linear regression, least squares method and the kernel regression method. We will start with the linear regression algorithm. For this algorithm we will take this as our data set, x as our data set while y is our labels. The mapping between x and y is given by this plot and as you can see this mapping follows a linear function. Before moving on to the algorithm itself, we'll first discuss the loss function. The most commonly used loss function for regression is the sum squared error, which is given by this equation. For understanding this loss function further, we take y equal to x as a baseline model. And here in this baseline model, w is given by 1. So the plotting is given here. And as you can see, this is the w vector and these are the residuals. Calculating the loss function using this formula, we finally get the loss to be as 10.6. The least squares regression closed form solution is given by optimizing the error function itself. So we try to minimize the error function with respect to w. This function can be written in terms of w as follows. And when we take the gradient with respect to w, we finally get this equation. Setting the gradient to 0, we get this equation. And for solving it for w, finally we get a solution to be w star equal to xx transpose pseudo inverse xy. Here this represents the pseudo inverse of xx transpose. Now let's use this least squares regression closed form solution on our data set. Before that, we'll add a row of ones to account for the bias in our data set. Now, plugging in the value of x and y into the closed form solution, into this closed form solution, and solve for w, we get this as a final step, and this is our final w. And this is the w which we obtain using least squares regression. Now, let's find w using gradient descent. Now, W star is the solution of an unconstrained optimization problem. We can solve it using gradient descent, where this is the gradient descent equation, where T represents the iteration number. Eta is the scalar used to control the step size, and eta is the hyperparameter which we find using uh, experimentation. In this case, we have selected the value of eta to be 0.1. And plugging in the value of x and y and eta into this uh, equation uh, and solving for w, we get w is equal to 0 and 2.02 .02 in just one step. Note that we have taken w0 to be a vector of zeros. So here uh, is the plot of the regression line using the gradient descent. The gradient descent as well as the least squares regression gave the same w, so it will give the same plot. Now let's go on to the kernel regression algorithm. For this algorithm, we have selected this data set, where x is this, while y is this. Plotting this, uh, plotting this x and y, we see the following plot. And as you can see, the mapping is somewhat of a quadratic function. So let's use kernel regression. We know that W can also be represented as the linear combination of all data points. And this, the coefficient vector is given by alpha, where alpha is an Rn. On solving that equation further, we get alpha to be k inverse y, where k is x transpose x. This k can also be obtained using a kernel function like the polynomial kernel or the RBF kernel. Let's use the polynomial kernel of degree 2 in our data set. This is the polynomial kernel of degree 2. And solving further, we get k is equal to this matrix. Now, let's find alpha using our uh, equation which we found out before. That is k inverse y. Uh, plugging in the value of k inverse and y, we get alpha is equal to this vector. Now let's find the predictions using alpha. We know that we predict the values of y using w transpose 
phi of x, but this W transpose phi of x is also equivalent to alpha k or k transpose alpha. So we use the formula k transpose alpha and plug in the values of both k and alpha and finally we get our predictions to be this. And as you can see, this is very close to our true labels. And when we plot our regression line, uh, as you can see, this is a quadratic function and all our data points, the true values, is very close to the regression line itself. Now let's try to solve this numerical problem. Gaussian coronal regression with parameter sigma square is equal to half was applied to the following data set with two features. X is equal to this matrix and Y is equal to those labels. The weight vector can be written as W is equal to phi of X alpha, where phi of X is the transformation mapping corresponding to the kernel. The vector alpha is given by this matrix, which is obtained by K inverse alpha, where K is the kernel matrix. What will be the prediction for the point 1, 1 transpose? Now, first we will try to simplify the kernel kernel function itself. The kernel function originally is given by this, but as we know the value of sigma square uh, here, we uh, plug in the value of sigma square here and we simplify it to this. Now this is how the uh, k transpose alpha is written and k1 test, k2 test and all can be solved here. And after solving for k of x1, x test, uh, if we plug in the values here, you can see that the Euclidean distance is 1. Therefore, we get e raised to minus 1 here and likewise. So, solving this uh, dot product, we get this as our output. And uh, on further calculation, you can see that uh, we come to the conclusion that k transpose alpha is equal to 3. Now, let's implement what we learned in a companion notebook in Jupyter Lab. So we first get our data set and assign it to variable x and y and plotting it we get this plot. As you can see this 2 follows, it's the same plot and it follows the linear mapping. We add the uh, ones here first and the new x matrix is as follows. And then we obtain w using the closed form solution for least squares regression. The w is same as we saw in the companion notebook. Now we use gradient descent to find the optimal w. The eta value is declared here. W grad is initialized to a vector of zeros. And uh, we run it for one iteration. Uh, and finally, we get W to be as the same as the closed form solution. Plotting the uh, optimal W, we get this picture. And as you can see, this is very, the predictions are very close to the true labels. Now we go to the kernel regression algorithm. The data set is declared here and after plotting it, you can see that the data set follows quadratic mapping and uh, we first find out the value of k using the above equation and we get the we get k here. Later we find out the value of alpha using k inverse y and this is the alpha vector. Now the predictions is done by k transpose alpha. So, the prediction is as follows and as you can see it is very close to our true labels. Plotting the plotting the regression line, the kernel regression line here, as you can see it, it follows a quadratic function and uh, uh, the true labels are very close to the predictions themselves. Thank you all.